Question 29, Part A. On the day that Megan was born, her grandfather deposited $5,000 into an account earning 3% per annum compounded annually. On each birthday after this, her grandfather deposited $1,000 into the same account, making his final deposit on Megan's 17th birthday. That is, a total of 18 deposits were made. Let AN be the amount in the account on Megan's nth birthday after the deposit is made. Show that A3 equals $8,554.54. This may be answered recursively. A0 equals $5,000 and that represents the amount that Megan has in her account on the day she was born. A1 is equal to 5,000 multiplied by 1.03 plus 1,000, and that equals $6,150. A2 is equal to $6,150 multiplied by 1.03 plus 1,000, and that equals $7,334.50. A3 is equal to $7,334.50 multiplied by 1.03 plus 1,000, and that equals $8,554.535, rounding that to two decimal places, that equals $8,554.54 as required. Part B. On her 17th birthday, just after the final deposit is made, Megan has $30,025.83 in her account. You are not required to show this. Megan then decides to leave all the money in the same account, continuing to earn interest at 3% per annum compounded annually. On her 18th birthday, and on each birthday after this, Megan withdraws $2,000 from the account. How many withdrawals of $2,000 will Megan be able to make? The first step is to find a non-recursive formula that represents the amount of money in Megan's account after n withdrawals of $2,000. Let P equal $30,025.83, R equals 1.03, and M equals $2,000. Now A1 represents the amount of money in Megan's account after her first withdrawal of $2,000, and that equals PR minus M. A2 is equal to A1 multiplied by R minus M, where A1 is equal to PR minus M. And expanding the brackets, we have PR squared minus MR minus M. A3 is equal to A2 multiplied by R minus M, where A2 is equal to PR squared minus MR minus M. And expanding the brackets, we have PR cubed minus MR squared minus MR minus M. And we can generalize a formula from this. We have AN, so the amount of money in Megan's account after N withdrawals of $2,000 is equal to PR to the power of N minus M outside of 1 plus R plus R squared plus dot 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 plus R to the power of N minus 1. Now here we have a geometric progression. And this is a sum of a geometric progression or a geometric series. And this can be represented by the formula 1 minus r to the power of n over 1 minus r. So a n is equal to p r to the power of n minus m outside of 1 minus r to the power of n over 1 minus r. The next step is to solve for n the equation a n equals 0. That is p r to the power of n minus m outside of 1 minus r to the power of n over 1 minus r equals 0. Multiplying both sides, or all sides in fact, by 1 minus r. We have PR to the power of n multiplied by 1 minus r minus m outside of 1 minus r to the power of n equals 0. Now we have values for P, R and m, and they've been substituted here. And I've moved this negative 2000 over to the other side for the next line. And also factorized out r to the power of n, knowing that we're going to use logarithms later on to make n the subject of the formula. And we end up with this line here where we have 1.03 to the power of n is equal to this expression here. Applying logarithms to both sides to make n the subject of the formula, we have n multiplied by ln of 1.03 is equal to ln of this expression. And dividing both sides by ln of 1.03, we have n is equal to 20.249. So in other words, Megan can make 20.249 withdrawals, but that doesn't make any sense. It needs to be an integer, of course. So we're going to round down to the nearest integer. So Megan can make 20 whole withdrawals of 